They could not have been people that voted. So they couldn't have voted the, the Republican or Democratic primary. You had to find people that didn't vote. Uh, which I think was good for us. Um, we found a lot of them. My mother, who had become a citizen uh, recently at that time, it was the first time she voted, was when Rasmina actually ran candidates. We ran, of course, a governor. First, we tried to find people, you know, the people who are already leaders. We went to Senator McMahon, we went to Albert Banya, I think Barbara Jordan. I mean, you know, everybody you knew, you were calling. Uh, and of course, everybody said, not only no, but hello. I mean, you know, that was a good They weren't going to risk their reputation on running for office um, with Russell with a third party. We found a guy named Ramsey Muniz at that time. He was a young lawyer, very attractive. Uh, he's been a football hero, had been um, at Baylor, and had done an outstanding job at Baylor. And so he ran for governor. And then locally we found several people. Albert Benny III, who was the son of Albert Benny, um, Daddy Mesa, and Jose Montalvo was passed away, he was a poet. And then an African-American gentleman, uh, T.C., who ran under wrestling. <laughs> Across the state of Texas, and some of you from Houston probably had candidates, Austin had candidates, that a fossil might have had. Um, but people throughout the state were called to this initiative. They felt, OK, this is something we can get our heads around. This is something we can work for. This is ours. This is something everybody says cannot be done. Now, we got on the ballot, and we were the first, and as far as I know, the only party in the whole United States that actually made it legally on the ballot. Um, it took a lot of door to door. It took a lot of work. But we learned that despite all the obstacles and despite the threats from people, um, but despite whatever was there, we were going to be able organize for ourselves. And so that's what Rasmita was. In 1971, before Rasmita, if you ever see the posters for Committee for Body Betterment, which I ran for council at, at 23, um, you'll see the Rasmita envelope. Although it was not in Rasmita, that was kind of a precursor. So you could say, well, what did that do? Well, the Democratic Party had never had Latinos on the national or state executive committee. All of a sudden, they put people on there. I can remember the head of SED coming to me and saying, hey, thanks a lot. All of the waffle you have going, they just gave us a million dollars for job training. And he was very happy. And he was thanking us, because that would not have happened. Much of what you do has all these indirect things that happen. But we found that one, the other parties had to listen and look at Latinos since they had always taken advantage of Latinos voting for that party. And we found that many of the people, just like you, that became organizers went on then to become elected officials, to be organizers in their community, and to do really great things. For us in San Antonio, Cedro Rodriguez, who was a congressman for many years, was one of the party members. Uh, and there were many others that got involved. I think Norma, you said you were involved in the early days too, and, and there may have been other people who were. But it was a great learning, a great lesson. We had to know the election book, forward, backwards and forwards. That's a great learning. Because nobody can tell you. If you know the rules, there's nobody that can take that away from you, that can tell you you're doing it wrong. We had to, to be. Um, take the money that we, we have to use for party, uh, having the elections across the state, had to be monitored. We had to be careful with those funds. We had to find people and train them to be the election judges. There was a lot to learn, and so many of us learned that, that you'll find that all these years later, many of those people, the majority, have stayed in their community and been active. Let me just jump in. Over over the years, I've been involved in a lot of different ones, as many people here, many different types of struggles. One was getting the downtown campus for UTSA, getting our local campus, which people did not want to see. Um, there have been many, many other times. Uh, lately, the Latino collection 
which the board resisted, but we finally got, and it's now going to be renovated on the first floor, and lots of good things done with it. Um, I learned a great deal, and you will too, some of you already have. But I never realized how that would serve me later. And I'll, I'll give you an example to close it up. In 2000, when Jan was graduating from Harvard Law, he and Joaquin had spent every summer working at the city in economic development and making a little money to go back to school. Um, so they knew people in the city. And when Julian decides to run for mayor, he goes to all of the neighborhood associations in the area, and he goes to their chair, and to their executive committee, and says, I'd like to run for mayor. Will you support me? They said, no, I'm sorry, me, but we really we like you. But so-and-so, he's running, and he's Ed Gunnison's person, and he's been helping us, so we're supporting him. So the man and Bobby said to them, okay, we understand that. But if he doesn't run, or if he's not in the runoff, will you support me? And they said, oh yeah. <laughs> he doesn't run, he's not in the runoff, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on my side, I had people say, no, your son's gonna run, yeah. Um, and, and so they'd say, how can we run? And I knew a lot of people. So we had a great thing going because they had younger folks, they had people organizing in their neighborhood, and I had people that had organized all their lives. And so we put together a committee, got people in eighth grade, and we put together a committee, and we made sure we had younger and older folks, folks from different parts of the district, and my old professor, Bob Ashcroft, actually did it for free, he, did a, he was the facilitator. And we asked the questions, one, what are our weakness and strengths? What is Kumyan's weakness or strength? What does the district need? What are the issues? How can we win this race? And who are the people we need to talk to? Well, it worked beautifully. So that combined, Julian won in a group of about seven or eight people at the time. He came out the winner without a run. Less than a year later, Joaquin was running for state rep. Same process. But I found that because they had the common sense to go and talk to the people that we needed to be talked to. And I had worked in the community for a long time. There were a lot of folks who were willing to say, okay, we're with you. And that combination was really wonderful. So 30 years I had, after I had run for city council and lost, no chance of going to win. Because um, there were four of us to make her better than me. Of course, none of us won. But 30 years later, my son was won first, Julian uh, with, the, with the city council, then talking with the state rep, uh, and then went on to mayor, and now secretary with the young Joaquin in Congress. So, your community remembers you. That's what I learned. They know that what is in your heart, that the love that you have for the community, that the work that you will do together, they know your values and their common values. They know your objectives, that it's not about making a whole lot of money. It's not about people recognizing your money. That it's about moving that needle further and further until those folks that keep getting left behind are no longer left behind. Coming from education, I can tell you, if you just look at one of the that I started with, which was the dropout rate, right now, we have come such a long way in terms of graduation rates for high school, for, for our kids. It's amazing, but it's taken years of a lot of people working it and developing and organizing model programs. So much work, a labor of love, and it's paying off. Now we've got to look at college graduation rates. But Everything that you do will have a payback, not only for you, but for your community, for all of the people that we love. So let me tell you in advance that I hope to be there to share the victories with you. You will have many. And if sometime you don't win, say, you win or you lose some, but that's okay. Sometimes a spirit is broken for a little while, but 
once you've organized, once you've been involved with the community, there's no going back. You may take a break once in a while, but there's no going back. So I congratulate you already for what you're doing, what you have done, what you're going to do. And all I have to say is, hasta la victoria.